Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Project Ozone 3. In the last episode we set up auto crafting for this elite tier 3 crafting table over here so we can now fully automatically request the crystal tine ingots or almost fully. Uh, it has the capability to auto craft them but we don't quite have all of the sub ingredients uh, ready to be crafted just yet like cobalt ingots, osmium ingots and I think pure status quartz ingots are not currently craftable by our AE2 system, but that is something we're going to work on in today's episode because at the very end of the last episode, we finally got the personal EMC link, which essentially works like an automatable transmutation table. We can put it down, we can select an item that has an EMC value, and then we can pull that item out of the personal EMC link, and it will use the EMC value that we have in our transmutation table, currently 42.52 million, uh, to generate those items. And the reason why this is so useful is that it allows us to bypass a lot of auto crafting, a lot of crafting of items that already have an EMC value. For example, uh, in the last stream, we were working on trying to automate, or we started to work towards trying to automate uh, all of the processes, getting all of the silicon, the logic, the calculation, the engineering, all of the processes, and it turns out they all have an EMC value. And so what we can do going forward is if, for example, we go ahead and grab ourselves a storage drawer, uh, this one right here will do just fine. And inside of the storage drawer, we put, uh, say, one of each process. So engineering, calculation, and logic, like so. We'll go boom, boom, and boom. We can then go ahead and lock that with our key, not this key. This is the concealment key. I'm hoping we've still got our draw key. We do indeed. So we'll lock that like so. So no other items can go into these slots here. And we should probably go ahead and put something uh, in that final slot just so that we don't overflow uh, any of the other three here. And essentially what we can do is if we throw down our personal EMC link, like so, and we get ourselves some kind of item conduit, like so. Ideally for this, we would need one EMC link per slot in the storage door. So for this to work, we would need four personal EMC links, which is fine uh, because these do have an EMC in and of themselves. And so getting more of these really shouldn't be too much of an issue for us. Uh, but what we can do now is we can go ahead, we can do this. We can set this to extract, always active. We can set this to insert like so. And if we just stacked four of these up, we could set one to calculation, one to logic, one to engineering, and one to silicon. And that would keep this storage drawer full of circuits. It would fill this up to 512 of each of the items. And once it was full, it would stop using EMC until we took some out, at which point it would instantly replenish them. And so going forward, if we did set this up, and we've got quite a nice amount of space down here to set it up, we've got a ton of empty storage drawers. And so my plan here is to essentially just fill all of these up with EMCable items that we can then have a attached to personal EMC links to keep them constantly full. Uh, that way, if we ever need to auto craft something, for example, if we wanted to auto craft uh, 64K ME drives, for example, we could go ahead and request 100 64K ME storage drives. The system would make it, and then instantly the personal EMC links would get to work at refilling all of the storage drawers with those items so that we always have them ready to go as and when we need them. Um, and so, for example, here, if we just go ahead and grab one of these, stick it in like so, it should then begin to fill uh, this slot. You can see right at the top there, engineering processor is currently at one times 64 plus 39, 40. 347 that's going to fill up all the way to 512 and if this was connected to our current storage door system we would be able to access that in our me terminal here and that's essentially my plan with the personal emc links it's going to allow us to essentially auto craft in air quotes uh, items that are particularly difficult to auto craft but also have an emc so setting up auto crafting for these while not extremely difficult is time consuming and unnecessary given that we can just use emc it does mean that we are going to need a very large amount of emc you can see already uh, we're kind of starting to running through we started with 42 million now we're down at 39 so we've already lost about 3 million emc they're just making these and so if the system is going to work we're going to need a large amount of emc thankfully i don't think that's going to be too difficult for us there are a bunch of different ways we could do it we could try setting up some kind of sifting system that's dedicated to just pumping all of its emc into transmutation and uh, we've already got 124,000 emeralds and so we're not really too shy on emc just yet we might also set up some kind of dedicated uh, non-sifting emc setup uh, in the future but that is not what i want to work on in today's episode what i want to work on today is finally moving on and trying to get ourselves the transmutation tablet we've got the table and it's great but i would love to be able to get this thing in my inventory never have to come back to this central area we've already got uh, the wireless crafting terminal and so it would be great if we could just fly around our island and not have to worry about coming back to use the transmutation tablet to use the ae2 system that would be fantastic the one problem that we ran into when getting the transmutation tablet is that we need these glowstone ingots the glowstone ingots are made in the osmium compressor and the osmium compressor requires steel casing which requires gray plastic from pneumatic crafter mod that we have not 
jumped into at all yet. Uh, so if we go ahead and open up the quest book here, the first quest in the Sai quest line is to craft one singular piece of TNT, which hopefully should not be too hard for us to do. It's not good stuff. I believe the follow-up quest to that is to um, create some of this compressed iron. Uh, this is made by essentially blowing up iron. Now, I think it's going to be best if we do this with tiny TNT. Uh, this is added by Applied Energy 6.2, and it essentially creates just a very, very small uh, explosion, which is really all that we need here. If we grab a lever, get rid of this, and we grab a couple of stacks of iron. The quest wants 64, but the process is lossless, and so we will lose a little bit of iron every time we do this. Um, I don't think that the TNT would blow up my base. I think we do have griefing disabled, but just on the off chance uh, that it does blow up anything we've already built, I'll come down to our little obsidian platform here, throw down the three stacks of iron and a little bit of TNT, and that should hopefully... We might lose the lever there, but that's fine. Kapow, look at that. We now have two and a half stacks of compressed iron. Nice. And I think that's all we're really going to need for today's episode. Uh, if we jump into some more pneumatic craft in the future, we might need a little bit more than we've got right now. But I think for what we're trying to get today, which is essentially just four pieces of gray plastic, I think we should be fine. And so get rid of that. Uh, we can jump back into the quest book here because a few of these quests are relevant. Um, I don't think we're going to need the pressure tube or the air compressor today, but we can go ahead um, and make these nonetheless. So the pressure tube, I think, is just some... Uh, compressed iron and glass, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see here. Pressure tube. It is indeed good stuff. And then the air compressor. This guy right here is also fairly easy to make. It's one of those pressure tubes. Some more compressed iron and a furnace. Easy stuff. That's two more quests complete. And then we get on to the quests that we need to actually work on in today's episode. And those are the pneumatic refinery, the thermo pneumatic processing plant, the plastic mixer. Uh, we don't need heat and chill uh, just yet. We could use it, but we're not going to. Uh, there's an easier way for us to get it to work. Uh, I do have all of these bookmarked on the left here. And hopefully uh, these are not too difficult to make. They're not a lot of them just compressed iron and then some other kind of resource you can see redstone diamonds glass not too bad whatsoever even the plastic mixer here is fairly easy for us to make and then i'm also going to go ahead and make an auto breaker here from actually additions thankfully we do already have that void crystal ready to go and then a fluid placer we might not have the anori crystals here we do but we're missing the Cerdas quartz tank uh, which is again easy enough just some glass and some Cerdas quartz dust we'll go ahead and make a fair bit of this just so we've got it uh, in the future if we should need it and that is going to go ahead and get us a fluid placer. The reason why I'm getting a fluid placer and an auto breaker is because the way that a few of these machines work, like the refinery, uh, the thermo pneumatic plant, and the plastic mixer, is that they require a certain temperature before they can actually work. For example, if we look here at the recipe for the gray plastic, the item that we are trying to make, uh, it is made in the plastic mixer, but the plastic mixer has to be at 150 degrees Celsius with at least a thousand millibuckets worth of liquid plastic. You can heat up the plastic mixer a couple of ways. You can use, I think it's called the vortex chamber, is the uh, the item that you make in the hot and cold quest. Uh, this thing does work, although it's a little slow. Um, Alternatively, what you can do is you can just put lava underneath some of these machines and that will increase the heat of that machine. The only downside to it is that after a couple of minutes, or I think it might be random, but after a certain amount of time, the lava does turn into obsidian and thus you need to break it and replace more lava if you're going to be able to actually continually heat this thing up and make it usable. Uh, the liquid plastic is made in the thermo pneumatic processing plant. It's made with LPG and coal, and again, has to be at 100 degrees C. The LPG is made in the refinery with oil from Galacticraft, and also, again, 100 degrees C. That makes diesel and LPG. We don't really need the diesel just yet, but the LPG is going to be very useful. The oil is... A little tricky if you go through the crafting recipe here, there is a way to automatically make it with the refinery from immersive engineering. And uh, you can combine nutrient distillation with biodiesel, biodiesel being another refinery with plant oil and ethanol, and then nutrient distillation being uh, made in the vet with a plethora of different items and some water. Thankfully, there is a much, much easier way for us to get ourselves some oil, and that is in the twilight forest there are patches of the stuff all over the place and so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to get uh, i would preferably like to get some kind of tank before we head on through though um, preferably some kind of tank that we can carry or we can place down and pick up again um, i know we can do that with the thermal expansion tank but i'm also thinking that the basic fluid tanks and also the higher tier of fluid tanks from mechanism do have the ability to enter bucket mode which I believe allows us to just actually use the tank like a bucket so we don't even have to put it down in the first place. Um, and it also has the added benefit of starting with 14 buckets worth of capacity, which I think hopefully should be enough. So we'll head on through into 
the Twilight Forest here, if it ever loads us in. And once here, we were actually really lucky in that we have a little bit of oil pretty close by. I do always forget that my flight uh, doesn't actually work once we're in here, but I'm fairly certain that just over here, there's a nice patch of oil waiting for us to use. I did find some between episodes, but my sense of direction is completely horrible. Here it is. And then once we found some oil, all we have to do is shift an M. You are going to have to change the key binding because by default, there are a bunch of other things that are bound to M. Uh, but once you've done that, you could just simply right click and pick everything up just like it's a bucket directly into the tank. And there we go. 14 buckets worth of oil. Nice. And once you finally find your portal to get home, we should now be good to actually get this show on the road. However, there is one other thing that I do want to set up before we get this going. And that is a little bit of fluid applied logistics too. You'll see I've got a couple of items over here, the fluid storage bus, the fluid terminal, and the fluid export bus. The plan here is to use these to keep our fluid placer are automatically full with lava because right at the beginning of the series, we set up this guy right here, our automatic uh, lava generation system being pumped into a quantum tank. Right now, we've got 747 million millibuckets. Is that right? One, two, three. Yeah, we've got 747 million millibuckets, which is 747,000 regular buckets. And so the idea here is that if we place a storage bus, a fluid storage bus onto this here, and we hook up a fluid export bus to wherever we place our fluid placer, it should automatically take the lava that's being stored in our quantum tank, and whenever it's needed, put it into the fluid placer, so that the fluid placer constantly has lava to keep our pneumatic craft machines at the right and desired temperature. Uh, the fluid crafting terminal is not necessary, but it does allow us to see if everything is working as intended. It allows us to see what fluids are actually accessible by the system. Um, it's also going to be useful later on down the line. We can hook up unlimited water sources. We can hook up all kinds of other liquids, maybe even plastic itself, uh, if we want to do some more advanced auto crafting with pneumatic craft in the future. But for now, we just need another piston. And uh, we also need an ME fluid interface and the export bus uh, doesn't require any fluid interface, actually, which is surprising. I did think it would require one. Um, and so hopefully this shouldn't be too difficult for us to do. We're just missing one annihilation core. I will go ahead and make a couple of these because we constantly need them for uh, everything in a Applied Energy 6 2. And that should hopefully get us our fluid storage bus. Of course, we need one more piston. Again, going to make a stack of those just as soon as I get a little bit more oak wood. Freaking pistons have been the bane of my life in this pack so far. We, we've needed so many of them and we've never had them whenever we need them. So I'm going to go ahead and make just a stack of those and kapow. Nice. So Emmy fluid storage bus. We've got an Emmy fluid export bus and we've got an Emmy fluid terminal. For now, I'm going to go ahead and I think just replace this here like so. I uh, didn't mean to get rid of the cable, but that's fine. We can go ahead and replace that down like so. We should probably replace the torch uh, because otherwise this is not going to be well lit up and we would likely get some hostile mobs that we're not looking for today. And so hopefully if we look in here right now, we're not going to see, um, I don't think, oh, that's not what I want to do at all. Can I pick that back up? I kind of want to cover that with my facade. There we go. Uh, nothing in here just yet, but if we head on down to our quantum tank and we throw down our fluid storage bus. Uh, it should act just like any other regular old storage bus and make the contents of the adjacent uh, storage inventory available to our system. Hopefully we've got enough uh, channels here. I think we do. I think we're really only connecting uh, this here, although it might be wise to kind of hook this up to here maybe because we might have something connected uh, further down that gets disconnected by this just so we don't have enough uh, channels connected right now, but uh, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, let me go and take a look inside of our fluid terminal. You can see we've got 747,000 K of lava ready and raring to go. And so now I'm going to set up a bit of a temporary setup here, uh, and we'll go ahead and grab some cobblestone. Not the nicest looking thing in the world. Do we really not have cobblestone hooked up to us? Oh, this is the problem for future Isaac. I think our cobblestone generator has been disconnected because we've not got enough channels here. And so real quick, even though it's not going to look anywhere near as, uh, as clean, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of connect up to a different side of the Emmy controller here. Hopefully uh, that will allow us to reconnect our cobblestone, ideally, and, and get everything back online. I'll just boop that off as well. Uh, let me take a look real quick. Cobble. Oh, no, I'm on... Um, crafting that's why let me go ahead and go to salted slash craftable there we go Eighty-two thousand cobblestone is much more like it and so if we go ahead and we grab ourselves some cobblestone here what we should be able to do is something like this i don't know quite where we might need a few more fluid places by the way and a few more auto breakers uh, i'm not too sure for now i'm gonna try doing something like this i'm gonna put down the auto breaker right about 
here. That's going to break the obsidian when it forms right here. We'll put the fluid placer down right about there. And then of course we are going to put our emi fluid export bus right about there. Again, just a proof of concept for now. I'm going to go ahead and hook this up like so. And if we grab a bucket of lava, we should be able to fairly easily connect this up. So over here, we've got our lava. Quickly grab a bucket and throw that in here. Like so, just left click. And so now that should start exporting lava into the tank. It is doing it, albeit very, very slow. Do we have any acceleration cards in the system? We do, we've got 45 and they've got an EMC value. So we'll go ahead and we'll just fill that up like so. And uh, that is gonna go ahead and put the lava down right away. Thankfully, for whatever reason, it's not spreading. I think that might be a little bit of server lag, but that's fine. It's working to our advantage right now. Um, and so now we do need another one of these refineries actually real quick here. Um, again, if we look at the recipe for plastic, the liquid plastic is made in the thermopneumatic process plant the lpg is made in the refinery and you'll notice there are a couple of different recipes here for getting lpg and you'll notice that there are two recipes that involve oil um, i think it might even be a third one over the page there is and the only difference here is how many refineries you use for example uh, the minimum is two which is what we've got and that will produce diesel and lpg if you put down three refineries on top of each other you will get diesel you'll get creosine and you'll get lpg and then if you put down four on top of each other you'll get diesel you'll get creosine you'll get fuel and you'll get lpg so we can get a lot more if we put down more refineries and we might do that in the future if we uh, decide to automate this more fully but for right now we're really only interested in the lpg and you'll notice that you actually don't get any more lpg with the more advanced setups and so for the time being we're going to go ahead and do something like this we're going to put down two refineries like this and like this and then we can get rid of this bit of cobblestone right here and what we should see in here is the temperature rising. It's 130 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't, I think that's more than high enough for the LPG here. Uh, yep, the LPG just requires 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, this guy is already in bucket mode. And so I think we can just right click into there like so. Beautiful. That's going to start to produce both diesel and LPG. Uh, the diesel will come out of the bottom refinery. The LPG will come out of the top refinery. And so... Whilst we could get out of the fluid placer and place lava uh, on this next block here, I think what will work just as well is doing something like this and having the lava flow into the adjacent block here. I think that works just fine. And so if we put our thermopneumatic processing plant, which is a mouthful to say, onto this block here, uh, what we're then going to do is we're going to grab a fluid conduit of some variety. I think the basic one here will work just fine. And we're going to extract out of here, always active, and insert into our thermopneumatic processing plant which has got the lpg in it and so now all we need to do is go ahead and grab some coal out of our system 884,000 is insane and that's gonna start to slowly but surely turn all of that lpg into liquid plastic and you actually get quite a large amount of it if we look at the recipe again here real quick you'll see that 100 millibuckets of lpg plus one piece of coal gets you 1000 millibuckets of liquid plastic as uh, so long as you have that temperature at 100 degrees and you'll see that even though it's flowing lava we are still getting way above that at 165 degrees celsius i don't think there's any risk of us going too high here although i could be mistaken and so don't take my word for that um but now that we have that liquid plastic we can go ahead and pump that along into the plastic mixer again I think all I'm going to do here, you can see the obsidian was made there and the uh, auto breaker uh, did go ahead and break that, which is fantastic. We can go ahead and put the plastic mixer, I think right about here. Uh, that should go ahead and I hope start to increase the temperature. If it doesn't, I might look to moving this up and putting a, um, a flat fluid transfer node between the two here. You, uh, you can make this a little bit more efficient, by the way. Like, if we look inside of this refinery, you'll see it does say warning, and it says seven of the 12 faces are exposed to the air, which wastes heat. What we could do is all of the faces that are not doing anything, we could surround with something like cobblestone, like this. And if we look back inside now, you'll see it says that one of the 12 faces, which is this one right here, is not covered. And so now the temperature is getting significantly higher and maybe is operating faster. I'm actually not too sure uh, if that does work faster or not, although it does look like it's coming in maybe a little quicker now. So maybe that was worth it. Um, and I believe we can do the same thing for this block. You can see again, uh, three of the six block faces are not covered and they're exposed to heat, which is wasting heat. So we will go ahead and uh, create a bit of a monstrosity, but it should work just fine. Uh, this is not heating up. And so I'm going to hope this doesn't fall in the lava. Thank you. And we're going to just go ahead and do something like this. Again, this might not be enough lava. I'm actually not too sure if that's going to actually work to uh, to heat up the plastic here. Oh, no, it is. It is. We're at 49, 50, 51. It's getting there. It's getting there. Um, that does mean, actually, real quick, though, what I'm going to do just to make this a little easier is I'm going to very quickly grab ourselves a flat fluid transfer node. 
this guy right here, uh, which shouldn't be too difficult to get. And this guy essentially allows us to transfer uh, fluids or items, if you get the item transfer node, um, between blocks. And so we can just put one right about there. We can put down the plastic mixer like so, and that should automatically start to move the liquid plastic from the thermopneumatic processing plant over into the plastic maker. And you'll see now we're actually gaining liquid plastic and we're slowly but surely uh, gaining in temperature again. If we go back one final time here to the gray plastic, you'll see we do need a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. And so it is gonna take a little while here uh, for this to heat up. But whilst we wait for that to happen, actually it's gonna heat up a lot faster if we actually put some lava underneath it like so, uh, that should start to heat up a little bit quicker. Again, we should cover it up potentially. I don't know if it happens with every machine, but we'll cover it up here just in case that does increase the speed of it at all. Uh, but in order for this to work, we need uh, three dyes. As is noted here, we need rose red, we need cactus green, and we need lapis lazuli. Thankfully, I think all of those are not going to be too difficult for us to get. We have one rose red, which we could, of course, EMC. Um, I doubt we've got any cactus green, but we should potentially be able to get ourselves some cactus and um, we do have sand over here and so uh, if we just grab some cactus seeds we should be able to throw those down like so i don't think that bone meal works in this pack but i'm going to try it again real quick anyway it doesn't um i think what does work is our watering can like so it is a little slow but hopefully should work to speed this up ever so slightly nice so we only need the one. Uh, we actually don't even need to. I was going to say we could just put one back down here to let it grow over time. This looks horrendous, and, and it is. Trust me. Uh, we will make a better-looking plastic setup in the future with uh, maybe using the vortex chambers and whatnot to try and make it a little bit more stable and re less reliant on unlimited lava. But uh, for now, let's get ourselves some cactus, like so. Uh, let's also go ahead and use our zenith furnace real quick to get some cactus green, which we will also save uh, in here along with the rose red. And I don't know if we already have lapis saved, but just in case we don't, I'll go ahead and throw that in as well. And so lapis, cactus green, and rose red, like so. And finally, if we throw all of these into here, boom, boom, and boom, once we get to 150 degrees Celsius, which we're currently not at, but that looks like because we've got cobblestone here for some reason. I don't know why that happened. I guess maybe, ooh, I guess maybe actually the cobblestone, the, the bit underneath of the thermonomatic processing plant turn into cobblestone instead of obsidian and we'd have a block breaker to break that that should be fine again we don't need this for very long and uh, we will work to make this because this is absolutely hideous this looks real bad uh, but it gets the job done 152 we can go ahead we can click on gray and boom we get gray plastic it takes a thousand millibuckets out of the right hand slot here the temperature doesn't change at all it uses i believe one of each of these although it might change uh, based on the color you pick because it looks like maybe it's using more green and blue than red, although I'm not too sure. And boom, we got ourselves four clear plastic. Nice. That should now finally allow us to go ahead and make an osmium compressor. We can get our steel casing like so. And the rest of the osmium compressor shouldn't be too difficult. We do need two advanced control circuits and four enriched alloys. Uh, these were all made in the metallurgic infuser, which thankfully we've already got set up over here. And so if we just go ahead and grab some redstone and some iron, I don't remember if we put any speed upgrades into this. We did not. And so it might not be a terrible idea uh, to look towards making some of those real quick because this guy is real slow without them. So we'll throw in the redstone and we'll throw in the iron. We'll start making some of these enriched alloys whilst we wait for that. Uh, do we have any osmium dust? We don't. We can make some fairly easily. Um, and this is actually a good point for me to uh, talk about some of the changes that I've made to the base between episodes. Um, you'll notice here I've set up a bunch of these ME interfaces. These are all hooked up uh, with our P2P tunnel right about there. Um, and I've also gone ahead and made a new sag mill. Finally, we've gone so long without having one, but we now have a sag mill to go along with our real alloy smelter, not the basic one uh, that you start out with. All the ME interfaces so we can do a bunch of auto crafting. Uh, I'm planning to put down some more uh, Ender IO machines over here, some more thermal expansion machines over here, and then maybe some mechanism machines like the uh, metallurgic infuser in the middle at some point in the future. Um, all of the machines are hooked up to the energy cell right here. It's got our Ender Spectacle on it, and then power runs underneath like so. You can kind of see 
uh, how that's being transferred up and into the machines covered up by these uh, covers from thermal expansion. And I also did a bit of base redesign. Uh, like, I don't, don't want to say redesigning. It looks very similar to how it did previously, but a bit of moving around of some of the stuff in the base. Um, obviously, the machines that were once over here are now over here, which makes this top area a little bit more open. And I've also consolidated all of our portals to the back of the base. The Hunting Dimension portal is over here. The Erebus portal is over here. And even the Landiator portal and the Lost Cities portal and our end cake portal, the all back here uh, on the uh, the rear end of the platform uh, so we've got no more just random bits and pieces floating around on this uh, this outer ring here and uh, so coming back over to our metallurgic infuser we've got 11 enriched alloys not a huge number but uh, let's see here real quick we've got the osmium dust good stuff uh, we should now be able to go ahead and make a couple of speed upgrades which is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier, although it is going to increase uh, the power that this guy uses. Uh, that's some more enriched alloy, which gets us yet more speed upgrades to make this even faster. Uh, I believe eight is the maximum. It is. Uh, we should also probably go ahead and make some energy upgrades as well, because you can see already uh, this thing is using 2,000 redstone flux per tick on its own. And although we do have um, a good amount of energy being created by that uh, tier seven solar panel, it is going to be a little easier on us if we grab a couple of energy upgrades here just to bring that down a little bit uh, it does require some pulverized gold and so once again we'll just go ahead and whack that in over there shouldn't take too long whatsoever again eight is the maximum although i'll leave the rest going in there because we are going to need more energy and speed upgrades for future mechanism machines including the osmium compressor that we're about to work on and so we'll go ahead and make ourselves eight of you throw those in as well like so and we do need to take those out first actually throw those in like so did i only make one if you, oh, I did, I ran out of, um, I ran out of Enriched Alloy. Try that again. Boom, and one more time. Boom, and boom. That takes us up to six out of the eight, but already we're down to 355 instead of 2,000 redstone flux per tick, which is huge. Uh, we are wasting a little bit of redstone here. We could get an enrichment chamber and make this a little bit more redstone efficient, but for the time being, I think this is going to do just fine. And so... Uh, what else are we missing here for the osmium compressor? I don't really think we're missing too much. We have basic control circuits. They were already in the metallurgic infuser from the last time that we used it. And so I think, guys, we might actually have everything that it takes to make ourselves the osmium compressor, which need two more iron buckets. Fairly easy stuff. And Capel. Nice. So one of the things that we do need to make the osmium compressor work, if we were to go ahead and look at the glowstone ingot recipe here, uh, you'll see that it does require liquid osmium. Thankfully, I'm fairly certain that we can simply just place osmium into the bottom half of the tank here. That's going to put liquid osmium into this uh, like little central tank. And then from there, all we need to do is put glowstone, I assume it was, into uh, the compressor. We do. Plus done, 164,000. Uh, again, we only need the one. It has an EMC value. The ingot itself has an EMC value. And once we have that one glowstone ingot, and of course we can EMC more of it, we should be pretty much good to go. We do need eight of these crystal tine ingots. And so we might have to go and grab some cobalt and EMC it in our current transmutation table to get enough to make that happen. Uh, but other than that, the supreme ingots shouldn't be an issue. I think we can actually go ahead and craft those on request. Supremium ingot we can indeed so i'll go ahead and request four of those um in fact yeah no, i'll do this i was gonna say we could just request the eight uh crystal tiny ingots although actually hold on crystal uh we've got 15 crystal tiny ingots already so never mind i will take the glowstone ingot we'll come on back over to our current transmutation tablet throw that guy in there and let me quickly do a bit of an inventory dump here because we've got a lot of stuff that we really don't need to have on us just yet whatsoever um we will go ahead and grab a ton more of these glowstone ingots i'm not sure of the exact number that we need here let me check real quick it is 20 i think and then we also need what is this 9 18 plus 16 is 34 i believe dark matter blocks let's have a look dark matter we can request them although i think it is going to be easier uh, to simply go ahead and oh we don't even have one dark matter okay do we have dark matter saved i think we do right we don't, we didn't, I didn't save Dark Matter. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly request one here real quick. Yeah, it would have been, I think, maybe a bit too much for our system if I tried to request uh, 34 Dark Matter all at once. You can see just requesting the one Dark Matter is um, a little tricky for the system right now. So that could definitely do with some, uh, some work. But thankfully, what we should be able to do is uh, grab this guy, throw it in like so, grab enough to make a block, scan that in as well i'm really hoping we do have enough uh, dark matter to make this work i think i am going to need a couple of uh, stacks of emerald blocks here if we're going to get there but thankfully i think we should 
should be able to get there. And so I just need 34 of these. Oh yeah, we got more than enough. We've got more than enough EMC to make this happen. We could grab a couple of hundred dark matter blocks and this would be uh this would be fine. And so 34. I'll grab a few extra just in case my arithmetic was off there. Well, I don't think it was. And then what else are we after? We need uh, all the covalence dusts. We also need, of course, the transmutation table itself. And that's pretty much it. So I don't know if we have the covalence dusts already. We do indeed, low, medium, and high. And so I think, chat, that we might actually be there. Thankfully, our um, transmutation items are saved into our transmutation network we'd have to worry about moving uh, this transmutation table here uh, we are missing of course those four supremium ingots those should hopefully be ready in the system they are indeed and so boom and boom and there we go we have ourselves a transmutation tablet ready and raring to go and so now we can access the magic of transmutation no matter where we are in the base we can also finally uh, tear down this monstrosity over here i'll get rid of the cobblestone uh, except for you and you like so uh, i'm not gonna turn on the rest of this just yet although uh, we will rework this going forward because there is some more stuff uh, that we do need to get into in pneumatic craft especially if we're going to push forward for those creative mode items um although oh it wants me the, the quest wants three i thought it had uh, not claimed for whatever reason but it had claimed it just wanted uh, even more of them i'll go ahead and claim these real quick grab ourselves some more rak i'm actually not too sure how much rak we have right now we've got 461 rak i don't know how useful the RAK is going to be in a world where we've got uh, the transmutation tablet. But uh, you know what? Just to spice things up a little bit here, let's go ahead and grab a question mark loot box. No, I'll grab a legendary loot box real quick. So we'll detect submit. It is 80 RAK. But hopefully, it'll give us something good. Oh, we got the bone meal of totem. That would have been... Super nice. Although this actually might be not bad. I think we do already have the bone mealer effect, but having it at level five could be super nice. We've only got bone mealer one. And so it does require 30 player levels per tier here, but can I, I can't take this off. I kind of want to test the, uh, the difference. Like I want to see how much better bone mealer five is than bone mealer one. So let me quickly get rid of this, the imaginary time block, which is speeding up uh, all of our crops around here. So you can see right now, it's pretty good. These are going a fair bit faster than they would if I didn't have the bow mealer effect. But if we were to go ahead and grab some experience cubes real quick and try and get all the way up to level five, I want to see just how fast this thing can go. All right, 55 is high enough. Let's go ahead and bump another one over. I don't know if we can go to tier six, though. That might be, uh, might be possible. I don't know. Is tier three the highest? It says it requires 30 player levels, which I think we have. Oh, yes, there's level three out of three. So this is the highest you can get. It's pretty good. It's far from bad. I really want to test, finally, if it's uh, going to make our lives easier in terms of things like cactus in the future. Like if, for example, I put down this cactus up over here, is this thing going to go a lot faster than it did last time? Just through, the, uh, just through me being here? Looks like maybe not. Oh, well, that's fine. We've got our transmutation tablet, and so it really doesn't matter too much if uh, if this guy grows slowly. That's not a huge benefit, the uh, the ability totem there, but not bad at all. Um, and so, guys, I think that is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. We finally got our transmutation tablet up and running. Next episode, I really do want to start looking at getting a bunch of those personal EMC links and hooking those up to all of the empty slots here that we've got for our storage drawers so we can kind of just get all of the items that are EMCable in our system, ready to be accessed and ready to be automatically refilled upon uh, once they run out using EMC. We're also going to have to look at some kind of EMC generation system. So if you've got any ideas for uh, cool ways to generate large amounts of EMC, let me know in the comment section down below. But for now, guys, as always, if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos come out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.